We're going to be talking short-term rentals in Cleveland. What makes more sense, a rehab or new construction? Let's talk about it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. My name is James Wise. I help investors like you, investors like my dude Jose, invest in real estate, short-term real estate. Short-term rentals, right? Short-term rental real estate. Long-term buy and hold real estate. Flips, wholesale, you name it, I've done it. $200 million in investment property sales, right? And today we're talking specifically about Airbnb properties. And we're targeting really nice, gentrified neighborhoods. And we're going to talk about the differences between hitting new construction in hitting rehab projects. Why would you do a rehab versus why would you do new construction? Is one better than the other? I have a preference, but truth be told, with anything in real estate that you do, there's pros and cons to everything. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go over one of those investments right now. We're going to talk about its pros, its cons, and we're going to talk about its vice versa, right? We're going to talk about the other side of things and that thing's pros and cons. Let's get into all that right now. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. What we need to do now, pull up the deal Go through the whole shebang, right? People could talk. They could talk to talk. They could talk to you guys about, oh, dad, you made money in Cleveland. Oh, money. But how do you make the money, right? How is the sausage made? How do you get from point A to point B? That's what I do. That's what this is all about, folks. Now, the property, 2150 West 30th, Cleveland, 44113. Price, 175. Days on the market, 115. We need to talk about all this, right? Now, if you're local to Cleveland, you know a lot of this. If you're out of town, you know, this is new news to you. Uh, Well, it might be new news to you. It's probably not new news. I don't know. They do talk about it quite a bit. People talk about it on the national stage, the national spotlight. Like, I know I've been interviewed by Realtor.com several times about Cleveland's resurgence, things like that, right? Cleveland, it's popping. It's making a comeback. We're getting tech. We have a bunch of medical, stuff like that. Lots of new development happening, okay? You probably heard stories about stuff like that. Big institutional investing, yada, yada. That's not happening everywhere, okay? There's like a select few neighborhoods uh, that are seeing a bulk of the investment, okay? And this is slap dab in the middle of them, okay? Right in one of them, right? Ohio City and Tremont are probably two of the most popular, right? And we're right there, right in the heart, right? You got Tremont, Ohio City, right? This is all good. You can't see my pen over there. I'm going to do it over here. This is all real good right here, right? This is where a bulk of the money's coming in, right? You got Irish Ben. They're doing a big old friggin' multi, multi million dollar thing right there, okay? Like when you zoom out, right? I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but I have something called the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. Of course, I've linked to it in the show notes below. You can also find it on the tools and resources tab of HoldenWise.com. I graded all the neighborhoods in Cleveland, A to F scale, right? F being highest risk, A being lowest risk, right? Obviously, A is more expensive, F is cheaper, right? Now, Ohio City, Tremont, another one, Gordon Square, Edgewater. These are like the gentrified areas, the areas where all the gentrification is happening. Like, in short, these are the hot areas, right? So the price points in these neighborhoods is going to be incredibly high, right? So... Like, your A-grade stuff in Cleveland, it's right there, right? As you go out here, it gets to F, then you go down to D and C. Like, this is where you really want to be if you want to pop in on all that gentrification, all that new development, stuff like that. But to the flip side of that, right, prices are going to be higher, okay? This one offers us the opportunity to get a discount, right? Because regularly, new construction homes in this particular area, right, they're going 300, 400, 500, 600,000 dollars. Now, 
admittedly, for the Airbnb program, I do prefer to go new construction homes versus rehab projects. The reason being, and perhaps the reason why there's so much new development and this area has seen such a resurgence, is because the city of Cleveland is paying you to do so, right? The city of Cleveland is offering 15-year tax abatements on new construction in Cleveland neighborhoods, okay? So admittedly, I think that's probably the better target for short-term rentals, but you can't get in at this price point, right? So to every pro, there's a con, right? So the reason this, even though it's priced so much lower than those, has been on the market for so long, two reasons. One, it was priced higher originally. Two, it was under contract for why it fell out, okay? They got it at 115 days on the market, 175K. I want to get in a little bit cheaper than that, though, right? 150. 150 is where I want to see you get in because I think we need to put 75K into this investment to get it to work as an Airbnb. Let me show you the photos, right? What you have here. Pretty decent looking house, old house, but like this, this isn't like nice or fancy or anything of that nature. That doesn't wow anybody. Now, we're going to want to keep hardwoods throughout. To me, this looks like a fake hardwood, okay? You can kind of tell right here, right? You see this? What's going on there? Do they, do they have like real hardwoods here and then they put like a shitty laminate floor on top of it? I'm not sure, right? So we got to investigate that. Obviously, we're going to need to paint it more trendy colors, like this old yellow, not going to work. Crummy old ceiling fan, not going to work. Got to get rid of these ugly-ass blinds, right? And then the bulk of our money's getting spent right here, right? When people are going on vacations, this is the location where they're going. They're coming into Cleveland. I don't know. Maybe they're coming in for the Cavs, the Indians, the Browns, or the Guardians, depending on how woke you are, right? They're coming in for that. They're coming in for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're coming in for the Science Center, whatever. Uh, whatever they're coming for, right? They want to be in the heart of everything. This is the neighborhood that gets them that. But we're not going to max out our nightly uh, rental rate with like this, right? This looks like crap, right? Like, what is this? Like right from the 80s, shitty ass kitchen, right? So do we need to do anything structural to this home? No, not to my understanding. But of course, we're going to have you get a home inspection. But this just ain't cutting it. It's dark. It's dingy. Ugh, you know what I'm saying? We got to bang it out, right? Like this is a nice fixture here. I dig this, but like this back bathroom, it, it's leaving something to be desired here, right? We got we to gotta pop this out, right? So what I want you to do is budget 50 grand. 50 grand. Now, we're going to have a hell of a lot more high-end looking house once we put 50 grand into it, but we're not going to be competing with the brand new developments, right? The brand new construction folks is still going to net the higher monthly and nightly rents and stuff like that, but we'll have a pretty banging ass kitchen and nice look to this home if we drop 50K. And then, of course, we're going to drop 25K to furnish it. Obviously, got to furnish it. The more beds, the better, right? We want to sleep as many as we can. After we do that, I think we'll get an average nightly rent of 375. Now, in this area, we're seeing an average of 38% vacancy, so we're going to factor for all of that, right? Because if you if you rented it every night, it'd be 11,625 a month. But you're not going to do that, right? It's not going to happen. Now, in the summer, we're going to rent it more, right? We're going to see lower than 38% vacancy, but in the winter, we're going to see higher. But it should average out to 38% vacancy, right? That is what all Cleveland area rentals are seeing on the Airbnb platform. Now. We're going to do more than Airbnb, folks. We're going to do Airbnb. We're going to do VRBO. There's another platform uh, that just focuses on renting to nurses, right? Nurses out there that are trying to rent properties for like one, two, three, four, five month stretches, right? Cleveland is a big medical town, okay? We have a ton of medical industry stuff. We got Cleveland Clinic, Metro Health, University Hospital. We got a lot going on, right? There's always a shortage of nurses, right? So you get a lot of traveling nurses. We're going to be targeting all of that, right? So hopefully we break the 38% vacancy. Maybe we get a little higher, but I'm going to give you conservative estimates, right? So after you factor in the vacancy, the fees to Holton Wise, taxes, insurance, all that jazz, right? I believe your true NOI for the month, like what you're actually clearing, 4,551.76 on average, or 54,000 in some change for the year. Now, total investment 225, right? I'm trying to get it at 150K purchase price, 50K in reno. 25k in furnishings now conservatively i think after you bang out that nice looking kitchen right home depot loves quality cabinetry but we're going to do nice real stone countertop 
the nines on the steel appliances really bang this thing out, make it look fresh throughout, throw in some good-looking artwork, some fancy furniture, right? That 75 is going to be well spent. I believe it should appraise conservatively at two and a quarter, which is nice because you do it that way, you get $168,000 back from the bank, meaning you only tied up 56000 into the deal. And if you're getting an NOI of 54 at the end of the day, that is a huge cash on cash return, right? That is huge. Obviously, you got to pay some of that mortgage down, but that should result in an 82% cash on cash return or a 243 cap. Properties like this make so much more money on the short term rental program, right? We do a lot of short term rentals and a lot of long term rentals. What I like to see is the hottest, most trendiest neighborhoods go with the short term rentals. We pay higher prices, but it makes more sense because we provide premium products, right? In premium neighborhoods, and then we get premium returns. And then what I like to do is do the budget properties in like the DNC neighborhoods and do like Section 8 investing. Like a property just like this would be about $100,000 less, right? If it was in like a D neighborhood. But people are going to pay a premium, but we got to provide them a premium product. And we're going to be competing with the new construction out there. So putting that 75K into this through repairs and like high end furnishings, that's what's going to allow us to compete. We're going to sleep a lot of folks. And we are going to get a solid nightly rent. And I think this return is going to be quite nice for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.